That's good for all of us, right? Welcome. Okay. Uh, the first song we're going to sing today is not in the bulletin. But uh, if you'd all stand in honor of uh, Hildegard's 100th birthday tomorrow, when you get to be 100, we'll sing for you as well. <laughs> Let's sing uh, a happy birthday to you, the Ladies' Aid song that we sing. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. The best that you've ever Well, the important announcements are out of the way now, so let's, let's get some of the other uh, less important ones. Happy birthday. And uh, so uh, just a reminder, you can see a lot of things in your bulletin today. Um, I want to remind everyone that we have the backdoor offering um, for the missions for the ladies' aid that's in place of the bazaar this year. Um, so you'll find a basket in the back. You can drop uh, uh, any offerings in there. Um, you also see on the bottom, and there's an insert in your bulletin, um, we want to welcome Ethan and Deb Bolstead and Josh and Allie Glass to our congregation. We're going to have more about that uh, um, as we continue through the service today. But they have uh, their addresses and information in there that you can add into your directories at home. Um, tonight at 6.30, uh, we have men, men's Bible study here at church. And uh, then Wednesday night, we have Bible study via Zoom. And uh, so keep those on your calendars. You see there next Sunday, um, Sunday school and worship service at the same times. And uh, then we see here again the uh, radio broadcast. We want to keep that uh, uh, in our thoughts as it goes out. And today's in is uh, honoring Hildegard, celebrating her 100th birthday tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's wonderful. We can have that in there. And then also um, there's shoe boxes in the back. Um, and we want to make sure that... Uh, you grab those and get them back next week, it says. Yes, next Sunday they're due back, so bring those back um, with the labels as well. And um, that kind of runs through uh, the announcements. Does anybody have any more to add this morning for announcements? Trent, if there's not enough labels back there because I forgot to bring extras, just put on the top and then I'll put a label on okay. for next Sunday. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yep, if it runs out of labels, Ann will take care of that if you have your box back there with the information. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you for joining us here today as uh, we uh, took a moment this morning to celebrate another birthday. And um, we know that uh, you are constantly here with us. You are joining us in this worship where we can freely come together to honor your word and the blessings that you've bestowed each one of us in our lives. We have our ups and downs. We have... Uh, um, days of, uh, of wonderful weather like you've presented with us lately. And, uh, and we know that it's a reminder that you are in control of all things. And uh, we just thank you for the blessings on those of us here, on our congregation, and uh, that you would bless the message that uh, comes from the pulpit uh, later this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if you would stand, our first hymn, our second hymn, is going to be Psalm, or uh, Psalm, excuse me, hymn 495, Jesus Saves. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, where the 
And if you'd remain standing, we'll have the scripture verse for today. That is in Acts 16, chapter 6, 6 through 10. In Jesus' name, Acts 16, 6 through 10. Now when they had gone through Pygira into the region of Galatia, there was forbidden and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they came to My Maisha, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And as they passed through My Maisia, coming down to Torres, and the vision appeared to Paul in the night, there stood a man of, of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly uh, gathering that the Lord hath called us for to preach the gospel unto them. <clears throat> Here ends the reading. Now if you join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now, for special music, we're going to call the Sunday School up this morning. today. Um, if you want to follow along with the second song, it's in our red hymnal. It's 329. Anywhere with 
Jesus when he points the way. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. chorus at Bad Axe Church. <laughs> and congratulations to Laney Deering to come up here with all those boys. Thank you kids for singing and what really is so fitting too for those songs. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you Lord for saving my soul and anywhere with Jesus I can safely go as we have this day of really a day of realizing the call that God has given to us to share the gospel. And now through the backdoor offering today and e each week, reminder that uh, we have the opportunity to share the gospel. So today, we're very happy to welcome into our fellowship uh, two new families, not new to any of us. Uh, they've been with us for some time, but they're going to be joining us. So I'd like to invite the uh, Bolsteads to come up and Josh and Allie Glass and ask, uh, uh, I wanna ask the deacons to come up and Drew uh, Rogers, our president as well, come up here to the uh, altar. It isn't so scary, you can come up. Well, they're coming up, by the way. Welcome back, Lila May. We got her inside the back door anyway. <laughs> Glad to see that you're back. It is a joy and privilege for us to welcome into our fellowship these two new families and uh, <clears throat> want to before we uh, receive them they're going to got a few questions for them beloved in the Lord in as much as you have expressed the desire to become a part of the fellowship here at Bad Axe Independent Lutheran Church I want to now direct certain questions to you on behalf of the congregation first of all do you accept the Bible as the only inerrant and infallible word of God? If so, answer, I do. And do you accept the Bible as the only infallible source for both what we believe and how we are to live our lives before God and man? If so, answer, I do. Do you acknowledge the God of the Bible as creator of this world? as recorded in Genesis. And Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God and the only Savior from sin. And the Holy Spirit, as the one who convicts us of sin, calls us to repent of our sins and receive Jesus as Savior and who indwells every true believer. If so, answer, I do. And have you repented of your sins consciously invited Jesus into your heart and life as your Savior? If so, answer, I have. And are you now this day trusting in Jesus alone as your Savior from sin? If so, answer, I am. Finally, is it your desire by the grace of God to live a life becoming to a Christian and to participate in the life and ministry of this congregation according to your ability? If so, answer, yes, by the grace of God. Yes, by the grace of God. These questions are for all of us, right? To examine our hearts. This is the core of, of why we gather together here. The core of a congregation trusting Jesus and lifting him up. So I'll call on Drew. Now myself, uh, on behalf of the council and the deacons here, we uh, present these two families to you 
as a congregation, uh, I ask the question now, do you accept them into the, as members of our congregation at uh, Bad Axe Independent Lutheran Church? Uh, if so, I ask that you'd stand. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you today for the joy of salvation, for the joy of the message of Christ, for the joy of having your word so clear to us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us all that we need for life and salvation in Christ and all that we need to guide us in our way through your precious word. We thank you, Lord, for these families and for your good work in their lives. And Lord, as we seek to lift you up together as a fellowship to proclaim the message of Jesus, we pray your blessing upon not only these two families, but upon each of us in our congregation as we help one another in our walk with the Lord, as we proclaim you as Savior to the world around us. So thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have together to lift you up. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome. You may be seated. All right, we're going to take some time for prayer now this morning. And uh, at the top of my list, I had thankfulness. Um, and the reason for that is sometimes I feel like as we come into the holidays at the end of the year, um, Thanksgiving, even though we have a Thanksgiving service and every, sometimes it gets over overshadowed. And, and we always bring our woes to the Lord, which he asks us to. But we also need to bring praises and thanksgiving as well for the blessings that we have, no matter how big or small. And uh, so, as we just see here, now we have new members added to our congregation. That's something to be thankful for. And obviously, thankfulness is a very broad term, but just something to keep in mind. Um, I wanted to keep in mind um, the harvest season as that's finishing up, um, the civil unrest in our, in our country um, as it's more divided politically, um, culturally than, uh, than it, I think it's ever been. Um, our leaders um, elected, our leaders that are currently serving, uh, both local and national. Um, I also wanted to uh, keep in mind unbelievers, those that are adamantly against God and his word, and uh, those that are maybe on the edge of the faith but wavering. Um, the missions, I wanted to keep them in our prayers. Um, financially, spiritually, giving them guidance, giving them peace in all that they're doing. Uh, the shut-ins, um, I wanted to keep them in mind. Uh, they're not here with us, but we know they're listening or watching or have different avenues. And uh, I also wanted to keep in mind uh, the schools and that the children in various parts of our nation are constantly being pushed back and forth due to virtual, not different decisions. And uh, I just pray that through all of that, that their, lear their learning would be uh, uninterrupted. That way they're able to, uh, to grow. And um, do we have any other prayer requests this morning? All right, if you'd join me in prayer. Lord, we just want to bring all these things to you this morning. And we want to uh, raise up our country raise up our military, our leaders. Uh, Lord, I, I just talked about the uh, remembering the thankfulness, and Lord, we're just thankful that uh, the leaders that have been uh, put in front of us, that um, you have a plan for each and every one of them. You also are uh, directing the course of our nation. We pray that you be with our, our military. We pray that you be with our leaders. 
um, as they are um, doing their, their duty um, for, our, for our nation. The military, Lord, as we, as we come up on the holiday season and, and that's fast approaching, even though we're in the beginning of November, they, uh, most of them um, that are, are not able to see family due to uh, serving overseas or being in, in places that uh, um, keep them from the ability to uh, touch base with their family. So we just pray that you would be with them that you would uh, always be giving them comfort and peace in dangerous situations or understanding in uh, times that, uh, um, that they don't, uh, are unable to be with those people. Lord, we also just uh, pray that you be with the harvest, the farmers, um, those that are, are gathering the crops right now um, for each of us to um, use um, as supply in different ways. And Lord, we just pray now that also you would be with the unbelievers in this world, that you would raise them up, help them to see the light, the truth, and that truth is Jesus. We pray that Jesus would have an effect on each one of their lives. And not only the atheists, the deniers, the, the truly against you, but also, Lord, that those that are maybe having uh, misgivings or misunderstanding about, about how you work or, or what you're doing, Lord, we just pray that you would comfort them, that you would strength, strengthen them, and that, uh, that your word would guide them and, and raise them up. Lord, as we, as we speak about guidance, we just thank you for the guidance and the missions that are not only locally, but across the, across the entire world, that, that you, are, you are a part of each one of those. You don't pick and choose. You are, you are backing your word and, and helping that word to go um, across to all the different uh, people that have yet heard it or have newly heard it. And we just thank you for that and that you would support those missions and, and uh, support those that are supporting the missions as well. Lord, we pray that you be with the, the shut-ins, that uh, those aren't able to be here, that you would give them... Um, Give them joy in the message that uh, we will be having um, uh, this morning and the messages that they hear, whether it's from the radio or from YouTube when it's on there. Lord, we know that your word can spread in so many ways and, uh, and that, that um, you know, they would receive your grace and your mercies and, and just really accept your word. Lord, we also pray for the school system the uh, children and those affected with the, uh, the unstableness of, uh, of society right now, that you would uh, keep everyone safe, that you would um, help them to learn and grow. And as we uh, all increase in knowledge, that we would see that knowledge comes from you, Lord, that your wisdom is the perfect wisdom. And as man tends to look for um, answers in other ways, we know one book. That book is the, the Bible, your word, and that we can lean on that in any time. Lord, we also just want to say thank you for the offerings, um, for the ladies' aid in the back, for the missions that that will go out to, for our offering here at church, that uh, these, these offerings would be a blessing to you and that they are given, um, that they are given um, from the heart um, back to you, Lord, for, for you to do what you will with them. We also pray now that pastor's message would, um, he would have the verses that ring true in each of our hearts that we can all hide and take with us as we uh, continue beyond the service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll ask now for the uh, ushers to come forward, please.
remain standing, we are going to sing hymn 502 before the message. of life today comes to us from the book of Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 through 13 reading in Jesus name and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write he who is holy who is true who has the key of David who opens and no one will shut and who shuts and no one opens says this I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut, because you have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them to know that I have loved you because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. 
I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have so that no one will take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Spirit of God, give us ears to hear what you say to us today. To apply this truth to our life, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one who opens and closes doors and that you've given to us as a congregation open doors to proclaim the message of salvation freely both here and around the world. Apply that word now to our hearts today, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to give just a very brief introduction. Revelation chapter 2 and 3 uh, includes seven letters that Jesus, the risen Savior, dictated to the seven churches in Asia Minor. These seven letters have three applications. I know we've talked about this a few years ago, but I just want to mention this by way of introduction to the theme for today. Three applications of these seven letters. First of all, there is the historical application. These letters, these seven letters addressed to seven churches in Asia Minor, spoke to the conditions and the needs in each of those churches in the first century, as Jesus dictated them to John to give to those seven churches. That's the historical application. Secondly, there's a universal application, as there is with all of God's word. Isn't it true? We read 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God, and it's all profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be completely furnished. All scripture. So these seven letters, even though they were addressed to seven specific historical churches, they speak to our hearts today too, as the need is, right? You'll notice we won't, not going to take time to look through all seven today, but uh, if you read through those seven letters, you will notice that there were specific needs in all of the churches and uh, conditions that they were living under and a description of their faith or lack of it. Wherever that is true, in every generation, these letters speak to all. A universal application. And then there's the prophetic application. The closer we get to the Lord's return, many have begun to realize that these seven letters to the seven churches are an outline of seven periods of church history, from the time that Jesus rose from the dead until the day he returns for his own. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the sixth letter. Next week, Lord willing, the seventh letter. These two letters in the prophetic application refer to the conditions in the church just before Jesus returns. So today, let's notice the focus of what I want us to really apply to our lives today is the fact that God opens and closes doors according to his perfect will. So the first thing, how God closes and opens doors. We read a few minutes ago from Acts chapter 16, and I want you to turn your attention back there at this time as a, an application of how God closes and opens doors. As Trent read them, so they are here in Acts 16, verses 6 through 10. The Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey experienced very, very clearly, as it says in these verses, 
how God closed certain doors. And then he opened other doors. We read there in Acts 16, verse 6, they passed through Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Oh, God closed the door, right? It wasn't in God's plan for the Apostle Paul to go up into those regions at that time. And so they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And in verse 7, we see another closed door, right? And after they came to Mysia, they were trying to go into Bithynia. And the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. A second closed door, right? Don't go that way. Don't go that way. And then verse 9 and 10. But a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. That's an open door, right? Closed doors, don't go up there, don't go over here. God opens the door for them to go to Macedonia, into, into Europe, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. They went. And God blessed that word mightily as the gospel came to Asia. An open door. So listen, folks. God closes doors and he opens doors, right? And none of us knows when an open door can become a closed door. And none of us knows when a closed door may become an open door. I love this verse. If you've uh, paid attention to the uh, uh, Kenyan Call newsletter, got this verse in the top. Come over and help us, right? That's an open door. Well, that's a historical example in the first century of God closing and opening doors. Now let's turn back to Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> we have here in this letter to the church in Philadelphia, we also have here an open door. The Philadelphia church Notice two things here as we read. There's so much more here we could touch on, but uh, let's focus on this idea of open doors and closed doors. Notice, first of all, <clears throat> what God does in verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this. God opens and shuts doors, right? He does that for congregations. He does that for individuals who commit their lives to Christ. Think of that. I was thinking this week of this thought, and I thought of that song, you know, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I'll say what you want me to say, and what? I'll be what you want me to be. God opens doors. That's what God does. We can try to open doors, we can try to open shut doors. Sometimes we shut open doors by not responding to God's call. But through it all, 
What does God do? I want us today to thank God for the open doors that he has given us individually and as a congregation. God does that, opens and shut doors. The other thing I want you to notice here very clearly in verse 8 is what God knows. You notice, first of all, I know your deeds. I know your deeds. Just think about that for a moment. God knows everything about you. Everything. More than we even know about ourselves. I know your deeds, he says. Now, friends, that can be a source of great encouragement to us. When we're going through hard times, when people misunderstand or purposely misunderstand you, the Lord knows your deeds. Aren't you glad that there is nothing hidden from him? Have you laid your heart open before him? God, you know it all. I know your deeds. It's also a source of conviction, isn't it? I know your deeds. When we even don't want to face up and confess to the real situation in our lives. We try to make excuses for our sin. Try to Overlook it. Well, I'm pretty good. I do this and that and the other thing. I know your deeds. Jesus says to you today. There's only one solution. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I know your deeds. The second statement I know at different times we've talked about this over the years, but I think it's important for us to understand today. God not only knows our deeds, but what does he say? He says, you have little power. Because you have little power. Does that surprise you? He says to the Philadelphia church, I'm going to set before you an open door because you have little power. Wouldn't you expect God to say, I have set an open door before you because you've got great power. You've got all the potential. You can do great things for God. That isn't what he says. He says, Recognize you have little power. Isn't it true for us? Isn't it true for us individually? And as a congregation? We have little power. We don't accomplish God's will in our own power. Who's got all the power? The Lord, right? When we are obedient to him, I know your deeds, but you have little power. It's okay to have little power, isn't it? Because when God is at work, then he has all the power, right? And all the glory goes to him. What God can do with the widow's might. Remember that? Jesus standing over there in the treasury and the people are throwing in their coins, the big coins, and the, the louder the clang, the bigger the coin. Here comes the widow with her little penny. And Jesus says, 
She's giving it all. The power is there. It's in him, right? Taking what we have and using it to his glory. What can we do? Little group here. To influence the world for Christ. Nothing. You have little power. But God has all the power. Remember Gideon? People of Israel were under attack by the Midianites for years. Finally, God says, Gideon, I got a job for you. <laughs> Gideon, he says, we're the smallest tribe of the whole, the whole bunch of Israelites. And I, we're the littlest family in the tribe. And I'm the youngest kid, the youngest son. He says, I want you to go defeat the Midianites. So he rallies together the thousands of, uh, of Israelites to go fight the battle. And God says, nope, it's too many. <laughs> and he gets it whittled down to 300 men to fight 40,000 Midianites. It's impossible. But that's where God began to do his work, right? Through his, through his power. You know the end of the story. 300 men defeated the 40,000. That's God's power. Right? I know your deeds. Secondly, you have little power. Friends, do you realize that? But have you given the little power to him? Have you given all you are and all you have to live for Jesus? <coughs> the third thing he says about this church Philadelphia, you have kept my word. This is huge today, isn't it? You have kept my word. Friends, I want to remind you, the closer we get to the Lord's return, the closer we need to walk with the Lord in the light of his word. You've kept my word. When the vast majority have forsaken God's word, talked a lot about that in Sunday school today, didn't we? Starting, it goes all the way back to the beginning. Oh, that Jesus could say to us, you have kept my word. Remember that song? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he send, sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who what? Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Yes, we have little power. But you have kept my word. What a challenge to each of us individually and as a fellowship today. Did you notice as we invited these friends here to join us in our fellowship? Questions isn't about what will you do, what will you do, what will you do? Are you holding fast to the word, right? Questions about who God is, who Jesus is, what he's done for us, and how we have responded to him. That's the fellowship of believers. You've kept my word. And lastly, fourth, you have not denied my name. Many today deny that Jesus is the only savior. Most people in our society, good, upright people supposedly, Deny the very basic truth that Jesus is the only Savior, the only way to heaven. We looked a couple of, in uh, last few weeks ago, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. 
Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? <coughs> this is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father, but the one who confesses the Son has the Father also. Do you have Jesus today? Love that old song, Jesus only. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That's why in 1 John 5, 12, Jesus, it, we read very clearly, he who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son of God has not life. Our, our society is a pagan society, friends, today vast majority have turned away from the truth of Jesus only. The name. It's only him. He's the truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. May it be true of us till the moment Jesus comes for his own. You have not denied my name. Lifting up the name of Jesus. There is no other Savior. No other one who can cleanse us, forgive us, prepare us for heaven. It's only, it's all in the name of Jesus, isn't it? Well, that's the ones to whom he opens the doors, right? I know your deeds. What does he say? I know your deeds. You have little power. You've, not, you've kept my word and you've not denied my name. Now, a word of application. How about open doors for us as individuals and as a congregation? What can we do? What could we possibly do to reach the world for Christ? Well, God has given us several opportunities. Think of the radio, TV, the YouTube, missions both at home and abroad, supporting the works, Christian works around here. Mission, the Ladies Aid, the offering today, Samaritan's Purse as we're bringing next week. You know, every box that you bring is going to contain the message of the gospel to some child someplace in the world. Days of Praise today, I don't know if you've read it. If you didn't pick up one today if you don't have it. It'll be gone in a few weeks anyway for new ones. But the Days of Praise this week, uh, this today, talks about that whole issue of the grace of giving. Third thought. Three words to close with, right? Words of counsel for us. Here we have it. Verse 11 and 12. First, I am coming quickly. I want to remind you today, yes, Jesus dictated those words 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago, to John. I am coming quickly. Two words to, about that. First of all, the idea of imminence. Christ can return at any moment. I am coming quickly. Secondly, the word instantaneous. Ah, 1 Corinthians 15, that great resurrection chapter of the Bible. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise imperishable, and we will be changed. What a great, what a great message, right? I'm coming quickly. Secondly, Hold fast to what you have. 
take hold of eternal life. Hold fast to what you have. There's an urgency and a strength there. It's like the words in 1 Timothy chapter 5 when Paul writes to Timothy, hold fast to eternal life, right? Hold fast to what you have. In a day when many are forsaking what they had at one time. One of the great signs of the times is the apostasy of the day. Apostasy is simply falling away from where you once were. And Jesus says, hold fast. And then last, verse 12, be an overcomer. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He will not go out from it anymore. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. Let's be overcomers, right? Overcomers until the one who overcame comes for those who have trusted him as Savior. Let's rest in him today. And I'd like to say the Lord is coming today. We expect perhaps today. But God has not told us which day. He's told us, be ready. That's it. Be busy about their father's business. And that's what it is to have an open door set before us. Heavenly Father, give us eyes to see the open doors that you will give to us until you come again to receive us unto yourself. Lord, we pray that we might walk through the open door in obedience to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for the sake of the salvation of those that can be reached if we all but be faithful. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Last song. I love to tell this story. May it be true for you and me as we leave today. The open door set before us. Hymn number 516. I love to tell this story.
Well, I'm not sure about you guys, but during the message about doors, I couldn't help but look at the picture up front. And uh, maybe I'm stepping on your toes for next week, Pastor, but Lord willing, we won't be here. (laughs) Revelation 3.20 and 21 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And 21 continues, To him that overcome, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. So if you haven't opened the door today, talk with a Christian you trust in, pastor, the deacons here, anyone, and uh, open that door if if need be. Let's pray. Lord, we know that there are many out there that do not believe in you, and we pray that you would be with them today. Lord, we thank you for the message that pastor has given us, laid on our hearts. We can trust in you that you have opened doors that remain open because you say, and that stay closed because you say. Lord, so we just thank you for your power, for your time here, and for each of us as we go about our week. Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless us and to guide each one of us. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee his peace. Amen.